Now, though, going back to around St. Patrick's Day 1983, as Jules Holland and Polly Yates introduce us to the world's greatest rock show. Good evening, welcome to The Lost in this current uh, series of The Tube. We'll be having another series soon. We've got another unknown band from Newcastle. Uh, this is Billy the Spoons, who's, uh, be, who hasn't been featured before. We've had a special spoon microphone built, built in for him. Look, this special expensive sound equipment, so it's a whizzing show. We've got loads of great things on for you. Where'd you get the spoons, Bill? Uh, I'd rather not say. <laughs> he stole them from a hotel, is in fact what he's trying to tell us, but he'd rather not, obviously. Anyway, some super things coming up. So now... You've had the spoons, you've had the microphone, you've had me. Now I think it's time that we probably zapped over and went straight into the exciting titles which you see every week. Tonight on the tube, we've got a definitive Jules Holland interview with David Bowie. We've got the undertones, big country, and also you too. And we've also got Mike Everett, who was going to be one of our presenters, but unfortunately he got had up for GBH at the last minute and couldn't appear. That's absolutely true. What else have we got? There's a little bit of truth in that. Yes, of course, we've got uh, Mr. Jules Holland, who went down to see David Bowie as soon as he's in town. We didn't want him to feel lonely when he turned in in Heathrow, so therefore we got him Pridden him in the corner and got a quick interview. Here's a bit of a video of Bowie's latest single, Let's Dance. Uh, it's coming on in a moment, and I don't think I've passed this particular whole, one. Getting the show on the road and all that, I mean, it, it gives a... Uh, having not done it for six years, there's a, a new impetus of, of wanting to do it there, which uh, I'm really pretty geared up for doing. You're not scared it might become... it might start getting you down? Um, I don't think so. I'm very happy with the band that I have for this tour. Well, you'll be having a, a lot more of me talking to uh, David. Me and David became very close in that interview. Uh, in fact, about four, three or four feet away I was from him. Um, and you'll be seeing more of that later, an interview with him. But now, what we've actually got, which is particularly uh, exciting, is a film or of us filming uh, Dex's Midnight Runners, which we kept the cameras rolling after, after we'd gone off the air and there was a big uh, shindig going on, and we thought you'd like to see that. There's also some of the jam as well, but we're not going to see that today.
that cries pure and true. Like this? No, not those guitars. They are too I'm noisy and cool. It kind of that confidence is real food. There's too little to tell her. I'm not going to tell her. Don't touch that dog. It was pure and I'm feeling from here. Don't need those bad influences. Thank you very much. I left them back home in Birmingham. A prisoner. <laughs> <laughs> we're control. here with Mary Wilson, who's going to tell us a bit about why you're here tonight. Well, basically because um, I think I've got one actually, Jules. Thank okay. you. Okay, carry on. Um, Give anyone well, two. we're playing at Newcastle City Hall tonight, and there are a few tickets left. <laughs> so uh, that's why I'm in Newcastle, basically. And if anybody's local, they should go quickly. Mm. Oh, now the other question which we I want to ask you is. Tell us about Crimea River. Who did the original? Tell us about it. Well, Julie London did the original um, back in 50-something or other. And uh, I saw it in a film called The Girl Can't Help It with Jane Mansfield. Who's and a you girl got who that had... noise that you just made out of that film as well. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Jane Mansfield was... You remember Jane Mansfield. I had very big eyes. Yeah. And, um, and that's when I first saw it, and I really loved the song. But funnily enough, someone has re-released Judy London's version this week as well. And that's just how shabby the record industry so, is. So, yeah, well, no good will come to those people, Jules. You know what I mean? That's right. Like, no good. And, and that's what they get what they deserve, these people, which is nothing. Uh, the, uh, the, the other thing, of course, is how long is your tour going to last? It I mean, finishes on the 27th of March at the London Palladium. Sunday really? night at the London Palladium. Well, you are you doing a... anything special? Well, we're going to have a few special guests. We might have things like, you know, perhaps name that tune or... Oh, you know, smart. just make it like a, a variety show, really, mm. you know. Mm. Well, I should definitely be at that. Have you, uh, have you got uh, any plans to go abroad, maybe? Yeah. On holidays? The first... <laughs> no, no holidays, no. Um, first of April, we go to Europe for about three weeks. And we're going to Madrid for a weekend. Yeah. Viva España and all that, you know. And, um, and then I think July, maybe, we're going to the States. So it's all go. All go. Well, let me say that it's uh, super having you here, because this is what it's all about. You people like yourselves, talented people, such as yourselves. Oh, thanks. I'm so not pleasant. Uh, the checks in the post. Right. Yes, okay, That's so the last uh, show. Uh, yeah. uh, and uh, so now, yes, it is the last show, so we're going to, oh, with the cameras over there, so we're going to throw over to Mike, who's up in the Bolocony. Mike. <laughs> you said a rude word. Good morning. I'm here with a few friends, all trying to get on the television at the same time. You bear, bear in mind, last week we showed you a clip from a film called uh, Monterey Pop. Well, it's going to be shown at your local cinema in the next month, so keep your good eye open. In a moment, we've got a piece of film that is absolutely brill of a band called the Flamingos from back in 1957. But first of all, we've got um, Donald Fagin, the only man that is hip on the whole west coast of America, with New Frontier.
live on the tube, we've got a band that was formerly part of the Skids. They've also worked with Pete Townsend. Would you welcome Big Country?
Well, for the slothful types that have only just tuned in, later on we have David Bowie and me having lunch with him, in fact. Uh, me taking my clothes off with him. That'll get you watching. Uh, the undertones and you too. One thing you won't be seeing is Paul Young here, who's just popped in to see us. Because uh, what are you doing tonight? Uh, I'm, I'm here to see Mari Wilson and join in the frivolities. Here go. And help Paula. OK, because she is about to have a baby. But now we're going to go into a film made in Northern Ireland, which is particularly interesting, so pay very close heeds. Those are the headlines at two minutes past nine. We're back again with more news at ten o'clock. It's two minutes past nine. We apologise for the loss of picture, but we're continuing in sound only. It's the Tube on Downtown Radio or Downtown Radio on the Tube, depending on whether it's the 21st of February or the 18th of March. On Nothing Better Tonight, The Perfect Crime, Bank Robbers, Ten Past Seven, The Outcasts, Henry Clooney of SLF, Mark My Words of The Tube, and fellow observer of local rock music, Barry McElhinney from The Hot Press. Together, we'll make a thorough examination of Northern Ireland rock music, so uh, don't pick at it or it'll never get better. And now, one of the most mysterious bands from Belfast, Cruella de Vil.
Two of the outcasts, brothers Greg and Morton, neither of uh, whom are unfamiliar with these surroundings. Lads, you're very welcome to the studio. Always here. Yeah, uh, in again. If you're not recording, you're doing interviews. Uh, Listen, uh, you're just back from France. How did it go? Well, the actual tour was brilliant. The uh, dates were excellent. They were the best crowds we've uh, ever, ever pulled anywhere. In fact, you broke a house record somewhere along the line, didn't you? We broke a couple. Mm. Yeah, Lyon, we broke one, and uh, Montpellier. Yeah. So it's pretty good going out there. Better than the hot bar? A wee bit better. <laughs> a lot <laughs> more. Not quite the atmosphere. Is no, it? Well, of course. Well, I mean, when it comes in years, in years to come, when people say, what's the worst experience you ever had on the road, Greg? I mean, I know it's a twee question, but it did happen this time, didn't it? Yeah, ruin. Mm. We got everything, everything stolen. Totally ruined. Everything, like, yeah. we just had everything, everything taken. So what happened? Did you weigh into the gig with no gear? Well, it was actually after after a gig. We were all back in the hotel, a partying away. Meanwhile, there was a few French guys out in the van taking everything. Right. <laughs> but it wasn't too bad because the agency out there just provided everything for the, uh, the tour. And Remy on drums is fairly happy about it now. He's got an electronic and he kit. He's Simmons kit out of it, yeah. much better than any English band or any band anywhere else in the world. We're the best, the ultimate punk rock band. Right? That's the difference. We don't have had to copy anyone. We have developed our own style, our own sense of our own ability. We're the best. That's the difference. And I'm proud to be from Belfast. <laughs> That was in the good days. <laughs> Let me put out this crap. <laughs> the band called the Undertones. Pure rubbish, huh? Which is get the my last my last yeah. recollection of being here was actually folding. Folding these leaves. Two thousand of these. 
On this uh, very floor. Uh, at least you know how to fold records, Steve. Here's the history. Just the phone the the eye cast. Well, that was our downfall. Wonderful, isn't it? Aye. Don't know if Grace, people in England greatest, know anything about good vibrations, but good vibrations isn't the record shop. It's not a record label. It's a way of life. It's a way of life for me, anyway. It's going to kill me. <laughs> uh, we started off with the idea. Well, it's basically, my idea was to set up a label to get a English record companies interested in the bands that we had over here because nobody seemed to be interested in what was happening in Northern Ireland. And then a few bands like Stiff Little Fingers and the Undertones and all made it. And there's still interest in Northern Ireland. We get mail from all over the world, particularly people in Canada and Australia and America. Sweden's big record sales for us, but in England we sell nothing. <laughs> so this is our chance to tell people over in England that our bands are as good over here as what they have over there. It's just that we don't have an efficient music industry over here. There's only a few people like myself who try to keep it going. It may sound very big-headed, but it's true. Belfast is like an island in particular that everybody in the music business knows everybody. Everybody's eating out of each other's pocket. And then you have other pockets, people from Derry and all, who hit, hit Belfast, <laughs> hit Belfast bands. Good vibrations for us, certainly good vibrations was an incentive to do it, as we had by that stage been turned down by the vast majority of the British record companies. And it was like the one glimmer of hope at the end of the tunnel. I've got to have you back. Hello, Seamus. Hello, David. Hello, Davy. Hello, Joby. You all right, mate? That's the transmitter gone. I think we're probably still on air, but oh, just yeah, advice. We are. Seamus. Hello, kid. How's, what's happening with you? Um, well, we've been hanging about with this uh, TV program called The Tube, and basically, I don't know why we've been hanging about them, you know, because of. Your, your, your specialist question tonight is major record companies. Mm -hmm. How have you found trying to break the band into a major record company? Very, very difficult. Person, uh, they've all got big doors in record company places, you know. It's hard, very hard to break into, you know. Yeah. Now, basically, it's they've ignored the whole Northern Ireland scene, you know. Right. And as you know, like, that's when I'm sort of into getting the point across, you know. And it's good, like I'm not giving us a plug, lads, but it's good to have us all here, you know. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> and uh, it's. Just good to get somebody over taking an interest in Northern Iron Bonds and basically help Northern Iron Bonds out. The Robbers managed to get over the um, a whole lot of A&R men from uh, English record companies. Yeah, so, that's right. You're next. Oh, yeah. Um, was well, that, that a difficult task? Well, I mean, I don't think so because we we we'd been over to London three times, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, four times. Four times. Yeah, four times. So, I mean, it was about time they came over and seen us, right? So we went to uh, uh, the great expense of hiring the Europa and whatnot, and we explained this to them. And, uh, well, they came over and they seen us, and that was it, basically, you know? And they went home again? Yeah. Oh, 
lot of bands in Belfast sit around moan and complain about having nowhere to play and having nothing to do. The bank robbers could quite easily have done exactly the same things, but instead they got off their backsides, they arranged a lot of things, and they are, are breaking themselves underneath their own steam. And if a lot of other bands in Belfast took that same way out, then something more would happen here. Some bright spark at Tyne T said, yeah, I know, while we're filming in Belfast, let's get Mark my words down there. Stick him in a pub, give him a pint of Guinness, let him do a humorous piece about the local band scene. <sighs> Ridiculous. Hello, chaps. Hello, Mum. Hello, Ma. People's attitude were the first annoying thing. Like, he's mentioned to somebody, oh, I'm going to Belfast to some filming. Ah, oh, learn how to duck, won't you, eh? Keep your head down. It's annoying, like, preconceived ideas of what happens. Like, because I, I thought I'll get in on the act to explode a few myths. Because the Irish stereotype has been going for years and all these jokes that I heard from working men's club comedians, you know, thick Mick with the pig looking for a job in a building site. But there's a new stereotype emerging. The people I've been meeting are the young, frustrated Seamus with the Fender strap looking for a record contract. Now, that is a joke because he's no chance, because there's no opportunities. There's a music here, there's no industry. It's like Maroon, like Robinson Crusoe, live and well, and playing in Northern Ireland. It's like, what do you do? In the provinces, they say, get down to London if you want to make it, but it's not that easy here, because there's a big obstacle in the way. It's called the sea, right? What do you do? I know, learn how to swim, backstroke across to London with the demo tapes stuffed down my trunks. What about the Gallup organisation, which make up the British charts, have a few weeks ago condescended to include the Northern Ireland record return sales figures? That's good. Now, why is it taking so long? Well, I thought, they, 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 they're far too busy fighting and arguing. They don't listen to records, do they? Oh, never knew. It's been Ridiculous. One really annoying thing is these bands that make records commenting on the troubles out here. They don't know what the hell's going on. I don't know. The people in the bands here don't want to sing about it. They don't want to know. So the only thing a record can do, it can't stop anything. The only thing a record can do is make people money, right? Boney M in the 70s had a massive hit with Belfast, a really politically aware song. 1983, Belfast still here. It took a few knocks, a few ups and downs. It's still here. Where the friggin' old Boney M. Ha, ha, ha. Anyway, one good thing is... Uh, the pubs are open all day, which is uh, quite good. So forget the advice, learn how to duck, keep your head down. Learn how to drink, keep your beer down. <laughs> See ya. Um, my name's Gregory. Uh, the reason I'm here is because these wallies in London think that I can write number one songs. Um, I would have my band here, The Perfect Crime, thereof, only... Um, the union won't have it, right? So uh, I've got them on the tape recorder. This is uh, a new song that uh, everybody's just going ape daft over. Um, it's in a very, very crude form just now, but uh, after Martin Russian or Trevor Horn or somebody's had their hands on it, if they ever do get their hands on it, which I hope they won't, uh, it could be a number one. So here goes, and I sing. That's what it is. What it is, what it is! It's hard to Drawing towards the end of the programme, uh, someone who, like me, looks upon local music and, where possible, tries to foster it, but spends most, I think we spend most of our time looking at it yes. and observing. Barry McElhenney, musician, poet, writer for the Hot Press, ex-member of Shock Treatment. Uh, you thought I'd forgotten about the Yes, I did. Yeah. <laughs> as an observer, Barry, uh, no longer really involved as a musician, do you think Northern Ireland is now going through a productive phase? I think that uh, a lot of the bands that I've been out to see in the last six months certainly 
are showing signs uh, of contributing perhaps to what you might call the second Belfast wave. But I think, I think at the same time that they have what some people may call insurmountable problems to overcome at the same time, problems of lack of venues, a lack of real financial injection in the scene here, a lack of rehearsal rooms, mm. various problems like that. At the same time, I think that especially the bands that have been seen on this programme are contributing something positive uh, to perhaps bringing Belfast back up to where it was maybe four or five years ago. Where do, where do the other bands and even some of the bands who have been on tonight go wrong? I think that a lot of the bands here are so concerned with uh, not commenting about the troubles, which I think is a good thing, that they tend to totally ignore writing about Northern Ireland full stop. They're obsessed in a way with writing about boy meets girl topics, things, fairly simplistic theories, and they're not developing their ideas about Northern Ireland beyond the troubles. Um, they're not writing about things that, say, people in literature nowadays are writing about or the people in the film industry here have been doing. I think that they should maybe take lessons from that and uh, extend themselves to write about such things as uh, what you may call the Puritan ethos in Northern Ireland, the work ethic, the family, the difference between town and country, problems like that that people can explore in literature and can get away with without being given this only writing about Northern Ireland brush. So I think, you know, writing about Northern Ireland doesn't have to be writing about the troubles, full stop. Some people get Arts Council grants. People get Arts Council grants to make films and to publish booklets and stuff. I mean, we, sh we should have been a registered charity. <laughs> I mean, for all the work that we did, put in, um, like, we put in over a thousand quid trying to keep a hard bar going. We we'll give bands loads of money. Not a tax man wants it all back. You know? It's just that I think there's more talent here per square mile population than there is anywhere else in England, and I believe that because we got a culture all of our own. Why have you stayed here? Why have you never moved away? I've always liked the place. That what I hate most happening to people, and it happens to a lot of people, is that you go there and you start to think you're something you're not. Mm. You know, because when, when you're away from the place you come from, you're thinking, "I'm a pop star, and people are coming to see you." But you're not. I mean, you're no different from the person you were when you came from here. And I, I mean, I, I like it here just as much as anywhere else. There's nothing to do, maybe, but uh, it's still home. That's all. Do, do the bright lights not attract you? And no, things I, to do? I can't stand it. I mean. At London, places like that, a sort of place, if you have the money to pay for it, you can have a good life, but uh, none of us are millionaires. <laughs> we can't afford it in any way. No, I, I just don't like this, that sort of thing at all. Well, a couple of guys who have never been interviewed in the programme before, and, and I now apologise for that. Uh, Bap and Brads are both from 10 past 7. Brads, are you're very welcome. Hello, thank you. How long have the band been together? Uh, in the band, in its present form, it's been gone about a year. But uh, it started from a CP, CP, and gradually grew. So how many are in the band now? There's five members of the band now. With keyboards. The original core at the beginning. Yes, mm. yes. Just two added extras. Bob, uh, you were taken out and filmed over yeah. the weekend. That's right. W what sort of an experience was that? It was a very cold experience. Yes. You know, we sort of stand for two hours in Town Hall Street. You know, freezing. You know. That's a wonderful place, Town Hall yeah. Street. It's good and a good atmosphere. You know, in the street and the freezing cold. You know. I'm going to 
I've been looking for an excuse for the past eight weeks to play this. Got it at last. Uh, it's Jeff Beck and Star Cycle. It's funny he's taken a new television channel um, to get the balance right as far as Belfast concerned. Hope that you've managed to tip it in the right direction. Jeff Beck and the theme tune. see myself as another Duran, Duran, you know, look at me. I think that uh, the tube in Belfast, uh, when I wrote about it and said it was magnificent and foolhardy, which may sound a very grand phrase, but it's a superb gesture coming over to cover Northern Ireland because it will inject enthusiasm when perhaps before there was little. At the same time, if that is all that the tube does and if that is all people see, they Friday night they'll watch Belfast and forget about it, then nothing has been achieved. with Bono from U2. Did you see the Irish film, Bono? I did, yes. I what did you reckon? Did you recognise any of the old faces there? They're new faces, actually. Well, well for you, they're old faces. For me, they knew the bank robbers, 10 past 7, people like that. Yeah, I, I'm, a, I'm an Irishman. I'm, I'm nothing else. Right. I don't I don't like a lot of what that means sometimes. I, Why not? I'm very much opposed to sort of paddyism, you know, the idea, let's go over and let's see what the Irish are doing at the moment. I, yeah. I'm not so territorial as that. I also don't like the sort of the image, the cartoon image of the Irishman. You know, either he, either he is, either he's he's expected to write a song about the troubles, as somebody said on the film, or else he's expected not to. Yeah. I think one is just as conservative as the other. I think what uh, what an artist must do, what any of those bands must do, is they must write about what's going on in their lives yeah, well, as uh, honestly as possible. That didn't come over in the film about, you know, the, the, the anti-sort of Irishman stance, did it? No, it I didn't, mean, It was no. a nice, bi you know, nice yeah. evenly biased film, yeah? I, I'm, I, I'm an ally of this programme, that's why I'm talking to great, you. Great. I think <laughs> it's, great. Uh, I think it's the best pro programme in the world, actually. Terrific. I think it's risky and I think it's good that, <laughs> you know, you're talking to me and that you're going back to your job as what? What is it? Well, a little bit of both. I, my boss don't like me to mention it. He thinks it'll be bad for business, so oh, I, see. I well, won't I, mention that. I but, like um, what you're doing. What do, you think, what do you think about the fact that after, you know, on your third album, you could have got in the situation where it was the obligatory album yeah. every year, and everybody's saying that this is the one. What, you suddenly done right? We haven't suddenly done anything right. We've done the same thing we've done for the last three records, for Boy October, for War. It's just that I think more people are disillusioned with pop music, as it's you know, as it's optimistically called, at the moment they want something. All right. More. They want they want to believe in the people that are singing the songs, and they don't want to hear sort of contrived songs about boy meets girl. No. And that's why war is. Why do you one. feel they should believe in, in you and the band? What what have you two got to offer? Don't, I mean, don't ask me. Well, you're providing. Why people buy you two no. records? But you're I know providing why I'm the sound, in the band. right? So uh, therefore, you're obviously trying to put over some particular feel. And it is, do you feel it's a positive thing that you're putting over at the moment? Yeah, uh, but there's no plan to it. There's no plan to you two. We're just four people. Right. We'll write about it. And I, as a singer, I write about what, what's going on. I don't care how contemporary that is, how uncontemporary, how fashionable, how unfashionable. It is what's going on in my life. I try to put Great. my life on the line. I've got music. to pull in there, mate. Sorry about that. Why do you that? have to do that? Because uh, we're going over now to, to Nick and Michelle. To We've got the undertones. All right. It's finished, you know? That was a rather interesting encounter for Mike. Anyway, here we are, standing on the gantry, doing our impression of Radio 1 DJs. We were going to be surrounded by sexy leather-clad bodies, but Malcolm and Paul, the producers, couldn't make it. So anyway, needless to say, I was going to have this uh, incredible piece worked out about the undertones and how wonderful they were, but they told me to remind you that they were only on because it was St. Patrick's Day, and they're writing some of the best pop songs around. They've got uh, an album out called The Sinner Pride, and here they are, coming up any second now for fabulous undertones. <laughs>
is in your shops at the moment. Plug, 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 plug. We also have a new LP called It's In Our Pride. Plug, 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 plug. And from it, this song, Chain of Love. Come on, so come on. Mm -hmm. 
I love changing my hair color, hate it when it fades, so I choose the latest preference from L'Oreal with a patented anti-fade system. Unlike some classic colorants, it locks color in for longer. Now, with even more conditioner, my hair can shine for up to six weeks. Recital preference from L'Oreal Paris. Fight the fade. You're worth it. with the flexible sole from Clarks. Lancome, renowned mascara brand, introduces Virtuos. Beautiful all-day curve, longer-looking lashes. Collect 600 Advantage card points when you buy two Lancome makeup products. Delivering your groceries yourself. Acardo.com, in partnership with Waitrose. Something's happened. The change occurs when the body undergoes REM sleep. <sighs> when you wake up, you'll feel the same. The Observer Book of Rock and Pop. Free this Sunday with The Observer. Sometimes you need a little extra help to keep our bodies in balance. Unlike ordinary multivitamins, Multibionta Probiotic Multivitamin contains natural, friendly bacteria. Just like the ones you find in probiotic yogurt drinks, they help keep your body working in harmony. Multibionta Probiotic Multivitamin from Seven Seas. Ariel with the breeze effect gives your clothes an irresistible just washed freshness. Ariel with the breeze effect, irresistibly fresh. It's not nice being told what you can't eat. Morning, Zalou. When you've got high cholesterol, you'll probably hear it all the time. Go easy on that. And cut back on that. And that. Wouldn't it be nice to be told what you can eat for a change? Take Kellogg's Optivita. It's been specifically developed to help lower cholesterol, as it contains a concentration of the most effective part of the oat. Kellogg's Optivita, specifically developed to help lower cholesterol. Buon appetito. To stay feeling young, we take care of ourselves, so I invest in my skin. I'm always searching for my perfect moisturizer. I've discovered Dermagenesis. Only L'Oreal Paris Dermagenesis has Proxilan and Hyaluronic Acid. Everybody's talking about it. It intensely moisturizes for younger looking skin and nurtures cells in the top skin layers. Skin feels plumped up, tautened with a dewy glow. New L'Oreal Paris Dermagenesis. For your free sample, visit l'orealdermagenesis.co.uk. Because we're worth it.
This is it, the 20th programme, my 16th, and everybody keeps asking me, what's the tube done for you, Mark? Well, first of all, it's got me good and pissed off with trains. Every Friday, the Intercity 125 from Sheffield, I'm always by myself, and I get on the train, and I've got no one to talk to, 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 no one to talk to. People sucking bloody murray mints, reading Edge Westerns, right? And families playing I Bloody Spy, I'm trying to communicate. I go to the toilet, it says, do not use the toilet whilst the train is at a station. Use it whilst the train is in motion. Yeah, psh, psh, spraying it all over the place. The tube's got me used to hotels. I've never stayed in a hotel before. Me, I take advantage. I'm to the bath at home since November. I clear the hotel. Shampoo, shoe shiners, bubble baths, soap, the lot. I get the TV in my bag if I could get it. And TV, don't let them kid you. This program is for your enjoyment. This is for your information. Forget it. The TV is for ratings only. That's what TV's for. And that's fair enough, but why don't they come clean and tell you? If you're one of those people who likes to leave the TV on to deter burglars, no channel deters burglars like ours, the new Channel 4. Actually, you're lucky because I thought you're going to get another pop show instead of the tube. I thought you should have got an hour and three quarters of pro-celebrity bogey-flicking, right? How long you been bogey-flicking, John? Well, like I start smoking like I had to have something to do with my fingers, so I just started picking like, then I started rolling, then I started flicking. It went miles to great bogeys, don't save them for the salad. Or one of those... Wally quiz shows, right? A gormless couple from Woking compete for tonight's star prize. A 14-inch portable holiday for two in a rich, creamy sauce with plenty of legroom, guaranteed till the end of time. Stories from behind the scenes at the Tube, right? Come here. The makeup department deserve a medal. Every Friday night, they line them up, the pop stars, the presenters, all with pizza faces. Line them up, get them in, come on. <laughs> There you go, you're done. Don't knock any nails in for six months. Get the next one in. My God, look at his face. Get the cement mixer. Forget it. Sandblast him. Psh. It's like the canteen upstairs, right? Every Friday, it's fish. And that's when pop stars are de-glamorized, right? Pop stars cannot eat cool later. <coughs> There's no funnier sight on this earth than Midge Ewer trying to get his mouth around a piece of cod twice as big as him. Anyway, that's all from me. I'll see you again. ta -da. I beg your pardon. Um, right, that was Mark My Words of Whom It's Been Said. Now, um, it's as hot as a Buddha's bra in here at the moment, and sitting next to us is Yvonne French and, um, who is it, for Christ's sake? Oh, Graham Fletcher Cook, of course, who will be on your screens for about the next year and a half with a new programme switch. Now, Yvonne, tell me, who is going to be on your first proggy? Um, Paul Weller and his new band, Style Council, Fun Boy 3, Pete Shelley, loads and loads of good promos, videos. Well, sitting opposite here, me, is the fabulous Mandy. Now, Thank you, you're Mandy. going to talk to Graham, aren't you? Graham, what sort of present are you going to give? Is it going to be like, you know, for the kids and that, you know, rather really well, deep, or is it going to be, hi, everybody, here, switch? Uh, it's not, we're not going to do any long, boring interviewing, talking, rubbish interviews with hairstylists. Like we're going to, it's going to be a fast-moving, furious programme. March 25th it starts, after the Adams Family, Channel 4. Tune in and switch Tune on. in oh. if you want to have a laugh, because it's going to be a laugh. Publicists, I mean, don't bother, this is, just get a grip. Well, anyway. From, from that, oh, you do it. <laughs> Stop ruining, stop ruining her interview, you two. You'll get your chance next week. We're going back to sign on the doll next week. And um, Yvonne, well, over to you, Mira. No, you carry on, darling. I'm, I'm going to come out of this. It's getting extremely boring, Link. So what I'm going to tell you is that yesterday, film crews from all over the world flew into London because Mr. David Bowie was releasing details of his new album and the first concert to his son six years. <laughs> Guess who got the exciting exclusive interview? It wasn't this bunch from Switch. It was their own Jules Holland and the right, two cameras. Yeah, right there, Thank you so much. See the immediate respect I, I demand from these people. You can see, oh, in fact, and this is interesting. This is this is the sort of this is look. This is the sort of thing that we're going to get. These are the these are the, the this is the interest it's created amongst the world's press. In fact, some of the, I don't know who these people are filming for. Probably the BBC or someone like that. Somebody equally unspeakable. Well, we're wandering down here. Ah, oh, here's the ballroom entrance. This is where David's actually going to be. Please. David, David, 
Well, the first thing that we must ask you is, um, after not having toured for six years, yeah. uh, are you nervous about doing it? Oh, here in England, I've been toured. Uh, nervous in a, an excited way. I don't think I'm nervous in terms of actual performance. But um, the, the, uh, the whole getting the show on the road and all that, I mean, it, it gives a... Having not done it for six years, there's a, a new impetus of, of wanting to do it there, which uh, I'm really pretty geared up for doing it. You're not scared it might become, it might start getting you down? Um, I don't think so. I'm very happy with the band that I have for this tour. Who are you, who are you using in the band? I'm right? using Carlos Alamo, who toured with me for most of my tours since 74, 75. He's the uh, only guy who remains in the old band. Dennis Davis, is who's now working with Stevie Wonder, um, is replaced by Tony Thompson from Chic, who was with Chic, is now with mm -hmm. me. And the lead guitarist is a guy that I'm really excited about called Stevie Ray Vaughan, mm -hmm. who uh, plays some of the best real blues guitar that I've heard in mm. years. The, the other thing is that, the, that there have been rumors that this might be the last tour. Would you care to stem those? Or... Um, I doubt that. I, I, I can't see that I'd be touring next year again, but uh, um, I've really got no uh, real feeling about stopping touring. I mm. mean, if this goes as happily as I want it to go, then uh, it would. I'd probably tour um, uh, a lot more frequently than I have done. Yeah. And with the with the record that's just come out, I yeah. mean, I've just I've only seen the video yeah. of this of the single. But yeah. do you think it is? I mean, is the dance record is the record on the whole a dance record? Would you? Think? Uh, I think that track is predominantly a dance track in terms of that it can be danced to. The others can be danced. I th dance is uh, so diversified now. Mm. There's so many styles of dancing. Lots of different dances to do, aren't there? Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> the cakewalk, yeah. 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 <laughs> on and on, yeah. If you dance slow, I get, there's a slow track on it. That's right, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that's what I like to hear. Well, I shall be dancing in different styles. <laughs> the other thing that they did ask you in there that I'd like to ask you is where, where your home is. Switzerland. Switzerland. Yeah. But, I mean, as well in there, you said that you, because you travelled so much, yeah. it was almost like... The world was your oyster. Yeah, it, it does seem that I, sit, I spend much of my time in other countries other than Switzerland, but I guess that's a base. Um, but I, I have travelled extensively over the last ten years from Siberia through to uh, Australia and uh, God, mm. there's very few countries that I haven't been to. In South what? America is the only area that I haven't approached in. Would you like to go there? Uh, I then sort of two minds about it. I think. Yes, I would. I'd, I'd like. I'd, I would like to go there. A bit violent, isn't it, man? Yeah. Yeah, but so was Berlin when I lived there. That was Did that worry you at all? Um, I think towards the end it was something that I, I, I felt I didn't really want in, part in my life too much. It was getting more violent, but I, I still have very fond memories of Berlin. But there's a lot of people who uh, not imitate, but take from your style a lot. Mm. We shan't name names because we're not like that here. What do you, what do you think about people who do that? Uh, I'm pleasantly surprised that it's meant so much to them. Mm. I think that's great, wonderful. Okay, well, I've had a, sig a signal to wind up from a man over there now. But, so what I shall ask you is, just finally, is for a person that's done all these things, on your gravestone, what would you like your epitaph to be? <laughs> oh, Lord. Um, good conversationalist, but I doubt whether that'll appear. <laughs> really? Oh, well. And so we say goodbye to Derek Bowie, who'd like to thank him. And of course, it's goodbye for us. No, not goodbye. Let's say, let's say au revoir. Shall we say that? Adieu. Can Adieu. Bonsoir. Adieu. Get stuffed. A last word from any of you? Well, yes, I, want, I want to say yes, goodbye to my... No, I want to say goodbye to my nan, who sits and yes, waves well, we'll to me. Well, we won't worry about that. Well, that's the type of silly thing we would have. So now, the last word like for the YouTube more. viewers yeah. is assholes. And here is the fabulous YouTube. Yes.
It's not a rebel song. It's just a song, it's called Sunday Bloody Sunday. <laughs>
tell me what I should be writing about. I write about the things I want to write about. Because I think that that's what you want me to write about. Yeah. 